I've completed half of the sweater. I'm going to show you how to complete the other half. The first thing we're going to do is finish putting the little flower buds onto the center of the dress. I've already completed around half. I'm going to show you how to make them on the other side. For the green loops, we started with the right side facing towards us. For the flower buds, we're going to start with the wrong side facing towards us. So go ahead and go to the opposite side, and you want the wrong side facing you, and you're going to fold the loops forward. So push the loops forward, and you're going to take your crochet hook, and you're going to go into that first stitch. And you're going to take the green, the pink yarn or whatever color you're using for your flower buds. Make sure that your loop is facing forward, the green loop, and then hook your new colored yarn and bring it through. You want to go ahead and chain one and then just tie a knot. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch over. I'm going to stay in the stitches with the half double crochet that we made with the antique white color. Now for this first one, you're going to see that you're going to work the buds in between your loops, the green loops. So I made one single crochet already into that next stitch between the loops. I'm going to make four more and you're working them into the same stitch. So there's my second single crochet going into the same stitch. It's my third. fourth, fifth. Then you're going to take and leave a loop. You're going to go back into the first single crochet that you made into this stitch. You're going to grab the loop, turn the hook upside down and bring the loop through that first stitch. And you can see how it creates a little popcorn stitch that looks like a little flower bud on the front. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. Remember you're keeping the green loops forward as you crochet. Then you're going to make a single crochet into the next stitch. Then into the third single crochet, third stitch you're going to make your bud. So you want to space your buds in between the green loops as much as possible. And usually that means you'll make two single crochet and then in the third one will be the five. But you could space them however you want so you may have one single crochet before you make your bud but mine averaged about two in between each of my little flower buds or little popcorn stitches.
just going to lay my green loop down, just twist it a little bit. And then go ahead, keep repeating this all the way across until you've completed all of your flower or small popcorns across. Let me just show you what it looks like. So in the front, this is what your design will look like. And you're going to work this design all the way across the top of the bunnies. When you finish your small popcorns, go ahead and finish off and just leave enough yarn for burying your loose yarn end. For mine, again, I already finished half, so but you should be all the way across to the end. So your rosebuds should be all across the top where the bunny design is. And this is what mine looks like. Now I'm going to show you how to sew on the top portion and the sleeve. I'm also going to show how to use this different stitch to lengthen the sleeves of the sweater. Before we start that, I'm going to show you how to this make the This is what back. my back panel looks like. I did half and half, just like I did for the front panel. For the back panel, I have 25 Trinity stitches. So in order to get 25 Trinity stitches, again, you multiply times 2, which is 50, and then add 2, which is 52. So you would start with a chain of 52, and then you would work your Trinity stitches and your rows just like you did for the front panel. And they should be the exact same size as the front panels. So the same amount of rows. The measurement for mine is 11 inches in width and approximately eight and a half inches in length. The first thing we're gonna do is, is sew our sleeves together. So take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn as your sleeve. You're gonna take, make sure you have which side you want for the outside and you want to make sure that they match on both sides for the sleeve. So for mine, I'm using this side as the right side. So once you know which side you want for the right side, you're going to put the right sides together so that the wrong side is facing out. Put the edges together to form a loop for the sleeve. And again, the right side is on the inside and the wrong side is facing you. Then you're just going to take and sew the stitches to get the end stitches together to form a loop. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for burying into your work. And then you're just going to take and sew the edge together to form a loop for the sleeve. So go ahead and sew that all the way across and then come Once back. you've sewn the edge together, then you want to bury your loose yarn in. So just take your tapestry needle and you're going to weave the loose yarn end through the wrong side of your work. And then just take and cut the loose yarn end. After you've finished sewing all, both of your sleeves together, go ahead and turn it so that the right side is facing, facing you. And then go ahead and set both of them aside for now. We're going to take and sew the front panel on Make first. sure that all of your loose yarn ends are buried on your front panel. And then you want to fold it. Make sure that the wrong side is on the inside. And then fold your panel down in half. You're going to sew your front panels on one at a time and you want to make sure that your front panels that you have the edges towards the top. So the fold of the front panel is going to be where the buds, flower buds are. And before you 
sew the front panel onto the sweater, you're going to want to take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn and you're going to start in the corner, the bottom corner, and you're going to sew along the edges all the way across the side, the top, and back down. You're going to leave enough of a loose yarn end for burying into your work. Make sure that the edges line up as you're sewing, sewing them together. And then you just take and sew the edges together. This is what mine looks like after sewing all around the edge and I ended up at the other side and I still have some yarn left so I'm, I'm going to keep it on there as I sew it onto the sweater. Now you want to take the right side of the front panel and lay it down. You're going to line it right below where you sewed on the loops and the flower or small popcorns. Just line it up right at the base Then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to go into the pink portion only. Then you're going to go up into the front panel And you're just going to sew it all the way across using this method. Just go down and into the pink portion. Just like that until you reach the end and then come back. Now I've reached the end and don't worry, we're going to go back across this to make the stitch even more secure. If you still have yarn left over, you can keep that and continue sewing with that and just replace the yarn when you need to. Now you're just going to flip it over and then you're going to take and sew through to the front. So you're going to go and then go through the front and you want to make sure that you don't mess up your design. So you're just going to take and secure the stitch and just sew that panel to the front all the way across. Now I reached the end and mine is actually pretty secure so I don't need to go back across but you can go back across if you need to and then just attach the other front panel the exact same way and then bury all of your loose After yarn you get both of the front panels sewn on. Now we're going to sew the sleeve on to the dress. So you're going to take the sleeve and make sure that the right side is facing you. You're going to lay it right next to the side that you're sewing, sewing it on. Take your tapestry needle with the same colored yarn. Then you're going to take, oh, the other thing you want to do is make sure that the seam is facing down. So that seam that you created when you sewed the sleeve into a round shape, make sure that that is pointing down. So my seam is right here. Then you're going to take and fold the sweater front panel over. You're going to take the sleeve. and you're going to sew it. Make sure that you have that seam facing down. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle and you're going to sew it to the front panel. So you're going to sew it along the front panel. So all the way 
to the end of the front panel. Make sure that you tie a knot, leaving a loose yarn end. And just take and sew the sleeve to the side of the front panel. And you're going to do the same thing on the opposite side as well. Now when you reach the top of the sleeve, you want to tie a knot and I usually go a couple of times to secure it. Make sure you leave enough of a loose yarn end for burying. Then you're ready for your back panel. So go ahead and take your back panel and you want the wrong side folded in towards each other. Then you're going to take your tapestry needle with the same Then you're just going to sew it in half just like you did for the front panels. So you're going to sew with your tapestry needle and the same colored yarn, you're going to go up the one side across the top and down the other side, just like we did for the front panel. After you've sewn the back panel together, again you're going to want the two edges that you sewed together towards the top. The fold is towards the bottom, just like the front panel. Then you're going to line it up and you're going to sew it on exactly the same way that you sewed the front panel on. So make sure you have it lined up and you may even want to sew, sew it to the sleeve first on both sides. So I'm going to do that first. You want to fold up the sleeve and you want it to line up with the bottom of the sleeve. And you're going to have a little bit of a gap at the top. That's where you're going to place your panel for the neck. So just line it up evenly on the opposite side just like you did for the front panel and sew the sleeve to the other side of the sleeve. So you're just taking your tapestry needle and sewing the back panel to the other side of the sleeve. And you're going to repeat the same thing for the other sleeve. And then you could sew the back panel down. That way you'll know it won't be crooked. It will be even. The other thing you want to do is make sure that your back panel is lining up with your front panels as you're sewing the back panel to the sleeve. So now I have the sleeves sewn in the back. I still have to sew the back panel down, but I've got the sleeves, the back panel sewed to the sides of the sleeves. Now I have a little bit of the top portion of the sleeve expose more on this side than this side, but that doesn't matter because we're going to be making a panel forming the neck, so that's okay if yours turned out the same way. Now you're ready to sew the back panel down the exact same way that you sewed the front panel down. So you're going to take and sew across and then flip it over and sew across the front. Now my back panel is sewed on securely. This is what it looks like on the inside. Make sure that any of your loose yarn ends are buried. And then the front will fold over like this. Now I'm going to show you how to make the shoulder 
to form the neck. Now you need to make two of the shoulder panels. For my shoulder panels, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Trinity stitches. So that means that my starting chain, I take, I want seven, so I multiply times two, I got 14, plus two is 16. So you're going to start with a chain of 16 and then work your Trinity stitches. I have seven rows. I'm going to give you the measurements. So for the width, this one measures about three and a half inches, and then the length is two inches. I left a long yarn end for sewing the shoulder pad onto the sweater. Just use your tapestry needle, or you could just use the same colored yarn to sew yours on. Then you want to take and make sure that you have the wrong side facing up because you're going to flip it and then that's the part that's going to be the right side. So I have the wrong side facing me and you're going to take and lay the shoulder pad as far over next to the sleeve as you can. Just line it up and then you're going to take and so you can go ahead and grab part of the sleeve and the front panel with your tapestry needle and then just sew it in place and you're going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side with so this is what my pad. shoulder pad looks like so far. Then I'm going to fold it over. You can see how the front looks nice. There's no ridge at all from where you sewed it. Then you're going to flip it. So fold it up so that the right side is facing up. Then flip the front panel over. And then you're going to line up the edges with the sleeve. And then you're going to take and sew the shoulder pad to the sleeve. Then after you sewed the shoulder pad to the sleeve, you're going to line up the shoulder pad to the back panel. Make sure that you don't sew it to the actual sleeve. So push that down and you're only sewing the shoulder portion to the back panel. So then you just take and sew only the shoulder portion to the back panel. And again, you're going to repeat the same thing to the opposite side with the other shoulder pad, the exact same way. This is how your shoulder should look on the right side when you're finished. This is what your shoulders should look like on both sides. Now you are ready to make the inside trim. So you're going to start in the front and you're going to start in the bottom corner. Just take your crochet hook and join it right in the bottom of the corner with the same colored yarn as the main color as your sweater. Then you're going to take, we're going to bury the loose yarn end as we crochet. The first thing you're going to do is just chain two, one, two. That's going to count as your first half double crochet. Then you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch over, and it may be difficult because the stitches aren't going to be visible. You're going to be creating your own stitches and make sure that they line up evenly all the way up the front of the side of your sweater. So yarn over, go into the next stitch, just evenly space them. I'm going behind my loose yarn end, I'm bringing up a loop. And then yarn over and go through all three loops for a half double crochet. So yarn over, go into the next stitch, bring up a loop, and make a half double crochet. And you're just going to evenly space your half double crochet stitches all the way up 
the front panel on the side to the neck and then this is how back. mine looks so far and I found that there's a little groove right there that I'm able to just make my half double crochet in Now I've reached the top and in the corner as you're turning to work around the neck you're going to want to put a couple more half double crochets in that corner. So I'm going to put two of them into the corner stitch. Two half double crochets in the same stitch. Then I'm going to turn my work, go into the next stitch over. I'm going to place two half double crochet into that corner, that next stitch as well. And that just helps the corner to lay flat and it won't curl up on you. Then you're going to make a half double crochet into the next stitch. And you're going to continue making half double crochets, one half double crochet into every stitch. Around the corner stitch you're going to use more than one half double crochet to keep it lying flat. And you're going to work your half double crochets all the way around the neck and back down the opposite side and then come back. Now I'm finished with both sides and I'm going to line up my sweater so that I can place my buttons. For mine, I lined up the flap of the right side. On video it looks like the left side, but the right side of the sweater, I lined it up with the second row in on the left side of the sweater and I'm going to sew my buttons onto the third row. So make sure that the bottom lines up with the bottom hem and then the top lines up with the neck before you place where you would like if to If you're have using your, your tapestry needle to sew your button on, I'm just going to show you how I thread mine. I just use my DMC yarn threader, put the hook right through the eye of the tapestry needle. I hook the yarn and then bring the yarn back through. And then the easiest way I found is to kind of move the yarn threader up and down and then that brings the yarn right through. So these are how my buttons look. I was able to go through three times for each of the buttons with my yarn. And this is how I spaced my buttons. I, I alternated the colors too. You can have fun with the buttons. They have so many different buttons. They have bunny buttons, butterfly buttons, whatever buttons you can imagine they have and you can decorate yours however you want. And then on the inside I buried my loose yarn in. So I grabbed my tapestry needle with the bigger eye so I don't have to use my DMC yarn threader. And then I just take each of the loose yarn ends and just go through the back portion only, not through the front. That way the buttons are extra secure because they have a longer loose yarn end. And it also makes your work look nice and neat on the inside as well. Now we're ready to make our buttonholes. So the first thing you want to do is just take some of your scraps of yarn and you're going to line them up with your buttons. So here I'm going to show you, I'm going to grab the stitch that's lined up with the button and I'm going to hook my loose yarn and bring it through so it lines up with the buttons. And you're going to do that with each button. Then you're going to take and join your yarn at the bottom corner on the side that you're making your buttonholes. Go ahead and chain one and then tie a knot. I'm going to bury my loose yarn end later. So then I'm just going to chain one and then make a single crochet into the next stitch over and then make one single crochet into every stitch up to your first yarn marker. So one single crochet in every stitch 
up to the first yarn marker. Then you're not going to work into that stitch and you're going to make a chain about the size that you think you're going to need your buttonhole to be. So I have a small button for mine, so I'm going to go ahead and chain one, two, I'll actually chain three, and then I'm going to go into the next stitch, skip the yarn marker stitch, go into the next stitch, and make a single crochet. And then you can test it to see, make sure it's not too big. Just go around your button. And mine is a little bit big, so I'm going to go back, undo it. I'm going to try a chain of two on my button. One, two and then skip a stitch and make a single crochet into the next stitch. And then I'm going to test that button size. And I might make mine a little bit smaller. So I'm going to test it. That's how you test the sizing for your button. And when you come back, I'll show you what size I used for mine. So for my button, I ended up with a chain two for the size of my buttonhole. Then I made one single crochet in every stitch to my next yarn marker. And again, I'm going to chain two, one, two, skip the stitch with the yarn marker, and make a single crochet into the next stitch. And that's how you're going to make for each of your buttonholes. Now for my last button, I have a larger button so I'll show you when I get to that point, I'll show you how large I made that buttonhole. So for my last button, I made a chain of three. Then I finished making one single crochet into every stitch to the end. Now you're going to chain one and then turn your work. After you turn your work, then we're going to start working back down the same edge to finish our buttonhole. So here you don't want to work into that stitch right beneath your chain one. You're going to go into the next stitch over and make your single crochet. Next stitch, single crochet, and then when you reach your buttonhole chain you're going to make the number of single crochets into that buttonhole gap as the length of your chain. So in my first buttonhole I made a chain of three. So I'm going to go into that gap where I made the buttonhole and I'm going to make three single crochet. And then you can see how that would strengthen your buttonhole, make it a little bit stronger. Then you're going to make a single crochet into every stitch, one single crochet in every stitch to your next buttonhole. For my next buttonhole, I didn't make a chain three. I had smaller buttons, so I made a chain of two. So in these buttonholes, I'm going to make two single crochet into each of those. And you're going to repeat this all the way down the edge to the end and then come back. Now when you reach the end you can make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. Just yarn over, turn the hook upside down and bring the yarn through both loops on the hook. Now let me try that again. So I'm going to make my single crochet in my last stitch and then I'm going to make a slip stitch into the next stitch over. And then I'm going to go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And this is what mine looks like after it's all buttoned up in the front. For my arm sleeves, I'm going to show you how to add length 
to your sleeve. For mine, I ended up with a sleeve length of 8 inches. You're going to take your crochet hook and you're going to join your yarn right where the underseam is on the end, right where you sewed the sleeve together to form the circle. Just take the same colored yarn chain one and then tie Then you're going to be evenly spacing your stitches around as you crochet in the round. I'm going to bury my loose yarn end as I work. So I'm going to go into the next stitch over, go behind the loose yarn end, bring up a loop and make a single crochet. Then we're going to make a treble crochet. So you're going to yarn over twice, go into the next stitch over, Go behind the loose yarn end, bring up a loop. You have four loops on your hook. You're going to yarn over, turn the hook upside down, go through two of the loops, three loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two more, two loops remaining, yarn over, turn the hook upside down and go through two. And you're going to repeat this pattern all the way around. So next stitch will be a single crochet. Next stitch will be a treble crochet. Next stitch will be a single crochet. And you're going to repeat this all the way around back to the beginning and then come back. So when you reach the beginning, I started with a single crochet, so I ended with a treble crochet. Now just count your stitches. For mine, I ended up with 36. If you ended up with a different number, as long as it's pretty close, that's okay. Just make sure that when you start on your next sleeve that you have the same number of stitches. So now, as you're working in rounds, you should have the exact same number of stitches each time you come back to where you started. So then, what you're going to do is in the next stitch, which was my starting stitch on the previous row was a single crochet. So I'm going to make a single crochet into that stitch. The next stitch will be a treble crochet. And you're just going to repeat this pattern all the way around until you have the length that you want for your sleeve. And it creates a beautiful cobble, cobble stitch pattern. So just make sure that your treble crochets are over your previous row's treble crochet and your single crochets are over your previous row's single crochet. And you just keep repeating it until you get the length that you want for your sleeve and just make sure that both sleeves measure the same when you're done. Once you've reached the length that you want for the sleeve, you're going to finish right where you started. I finished with my treble crochet stitch and then I want to slip, slip stitch into the next stitch over. So just yarn over and pull the yarn through both loops on the hook. Then go ahead and finish off. Just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. Then you have your finished sweater. If you want to, on the back, you can make a pom-pom tail. I'll show you how I use my clover pom-pom to do that. Go ahead and take whatever white colored yarn that you want. I'm using some of my leftover I love this yarn. White cotton yarn. You just take your pom-pom maker and open it up. Then you just take the white yarn, line, it, line up the loose yarn end on the side, and then just completely wrap the arch with your white yarn. Then you just close it, cut the loose yarn in, and do the same thing for the Then opposite. I like to use my embroidery, small embroidery scissors to cut. And then I just take and cut down the center on both sides. Then you can take and just pull out the loose yarn ends, and then you're going to cut about a foot 
of yarn to go right down the center and then you just tie a knot down the center then you can open up the pom-pom maker and then remove the pom-pom then you can trim your pom-pom how you want and then use your tapestry needle to sew the pom-pom in so place. So I just bring the loose yarn ends through to the back of the sweater and then tie a knot on the inside. If you want to see, I made one of my dogs, the Crochet Bichon Frise dog, completely with pom-poms. So if you think that's something you'd like to see or do yourself, you can check out my YouTube video tutorial for that. Then what I do is I just take the loose yarn ends after I tie a knot, go right in where I tied a knot, back through the center of the pom-pom, and then just trim the loose yarn end. If you like the trim, then I'm going to show you how to do that. It's really simple. You just take and you want the wrong side facing you and you're going to take the corner and grab, actually I'm going to make mine so that the right side is facing me. So I've unbuttoned it and I'm going to take that corner stitch, which is the side that I have the buttons on, and then I'm going to take and hook the color that I want for the trim, and then chain one. Go ahead and tie a knot. And then I just go into the next stitch over, go behind the loose yarn end, bring up a loop, and then I'm going to make one single crochet into every stitch to the opposite side. So one single crochet in every stitch to the opposite side. When you reach the opposite side and make your last single crochet, go ahead and finish off, just yarn over and pull enough yarn through to bury into your work. And then you're going to do the exact same thing for the neck and for the ends of the sleeves. And this is what mine looks like with the trim on the sleeves and on the bottom.